The Sea Harrier FRS-1 is a squadron vehicle for the UK in War Thunder. Let's check it out. The Sea Harrier is the result of a combination of military, political, and economic considerations all coming into alignment at the same time. During the 1960s, the Royal Navy was going through a bit of a realignment, with its large future carrier project getting cancelled, an effort shifted onto a smaller class of carrier where the ships would officially be designated as through-deck cruisers. The first of these new light carriers, the Invincible class, put to sea in the early 1970s, and work was being done quietly to adapt the Harrier VTOL jet for naval use to complement the Invincible class's complement of anti-submarine warfare helicopters. Official approval was granted, and an initial order was placed in 1975, with the first Sea Harriers entering service in 1978. After some initial operational and technical challenges were sorted out, the new jet was cleared for carrier duty in 1981. The Sea Harrier had some notable changes from its land-based counterpart, including the Blue Fox radar set, a redesigned forward fuselage, some minor aerodynamic refinements, corrosion-resistant paint, and some tweaks to the landing gear to allow for operation from ski jump style takeoff ramps. When the Falklands War broke out the next year, the Harriers were the UK's only fighter aircraft that could deploy to the combat zone and were still almost brand new. There was a lot of uncertainty about how they'd perform. Well, the Sea Harrier instantly proved itself in combat shooting down 20 Argentine aircraft, including 10 supersonic fighters, with no confirmed air-to-air -air losses for the Harrier, though a few were shot down by ground-based anti-aircraft fire. The Sea Harriers are widely considered to have exceeded expectations in the Falklands and proved themselves as formidable fleet defense aircraft. The Sea Harrier went on to receive upgrades and flew for the Royal Navy until 2006 and for India until 2016. What we're looking at in War Thunder is the Sea Harrier FRS-1. This is a squadron vehicle in rank 7 of the UK tech tree with a battle rating of 10.7. This jet gets a comprehensive weapon system with a full ballistics computer giving the CCIP for all of its air-to-ground weapons as well as a CCRP for its dumb bombs. It also carries the Ferranti Blue Fox radar set. This is a somewhat basic radar with medium range and a fixed sweep angle, and it doesn't get any advanced modes aside from ACM boresight targeting. For guns, it gets a pair of 30mm Aiden cannons with 260 rounds of ammo. These are reasonably hard-hitting guns and are quite effective at destroying targets both for ground attack and air combat. The loadouts on the Sea Harrier include air-to-air -air missiles, rocket pods, and dumb bombs. You don't get any precision-guided air-to-ground weapons, but the ballistics computer makes the rockets and bombs totally viable for close air support or accurate ground pounding in air battles. For air-to-air -air missiles, you start off with the AIM-9G. This is a rear aspect missile with 18 Gs of pull and good enough range to be quite useful. While you're grinding upgrades for the plane, the AIM-9G will probably provide most of your kills. Your top shelf weapon is the AIM-9L, and you can take four of them. This is an all-aspect missile with 30 Gs of pull and good tracking. As of mid-2023, this is the best version of the Sidewinder in War Thunder, and it's a credible threat to anything you can catch. In terms of flight performance, this Sea Harrier performs very similar to other jets in the Harrier family, but with a couple of minor differences. It has great acceleration and rate of climb coming off the runway, owing to a strong thrust-to-weight ratio. However, it's still subsonic, and given the BR bracket that it's in, it means it's often going to be one of the slowest jets on its team after the battle develops. Once things get going and other jets are up to speed, the acceleration and climb advantages disappear quickly, as faster jets can use their afterburner and higher maximum speed to counter your thrust-to-weight ratio. You also need to be very careful with the throttle. This is one of those planes where you can overheat the engine and burn it out just by flying around at 
and the Sea Harrier can only use WEP for a short amount of time. My recommendation is to limit it to only about 5 to 10 seconds at a time. Managing your throttle and airspeed is an important consideration with this jet, and it may take a little practice to get the hang of it. Now in terms of agility, the Sea Harrier is a tiny bit more sluggish in turns than other versions of the jet, and overall it's not an especially maneuverable fighter in terms of raw dogfighting agility. At least under normal circumstances. Like other Harriers, it can use a technique called viffing, vectoring in forward flight, where you angle your nozzles down about 45 degrees in a turn to give a little extra boost to swing the nose around a little better. It won't turn you into a UFO, and dedicated dogfighters like an F5E can still beat this maneuver, but it does help and you should practice it. Viffing won't turn the Sea Harrier into an amazing dogfighter, but it'll at least help be an average one. Flying out into air battles actually gives you a lot of potential for different playstyles, more than you might expect from a jet like this. It has a good enough weapon payload where you can bomb a base or some ground targets and still have missiles for air combat, or you can focus on intercepting ground pounders and even just set yourself up in a position for dogfighting right from the start. Really, this is a very flexible jet fighter. It has the rate of climb to get on top of the battle early on, even if it might not stay there for long, but at least you can get in a position for some good early game attacks. The radar actually comes in handy if you go up high, since this jet tends to be pretty vulnerable to semi-active radar missiles, and if you know where the other team is at BVR distances, you can try and position yourself accordingly. Plus, the AIM-9L will slave to a radar lock, which can be a huge help. Now, speaking of which, the 9Ls are really the big thing this jet has going for it. You can take four of them, which is a really good weapons load for a small light fighter like this, and if you're careful early on to avoid the radar missile spam, you'll probably get at least one kill every time you fly this thing out. In terms of ground attack, this jet has a fully featured ballistics computer, so even without precision guided munitions like laser guided bombs or something, you can still put ordnance on target relatively accurately with a little practice. It can hit a base before air combat or fly around with the rocket pods, attacking AI ground units for point farming. For close air support, I generally prefer the dumb bombs since you get the CCIP and they end up being a little bit easier to hit with and they do more damage than the rockets. Overall, I'd rate this jet as reasonably good for flying out over ground battles, but you still have to be careful about SPAA. Visually, I think this is one of the best looking Harriers in the game. The redesigned nose is pretty sleek and the paint job is decent. As usual, the details on the 3D rendering are outstanding. Landing this jet is exactly the same as other versions of the Harrier, and if you need more info about the VTOL controls, I'll refer you to the VTOL section in my review of the other Harrier jets, which I'll link in a pinned comment below the video. Now, the cockpit on this jet offers excellent visibility, but some of the instruments are in weird places, and the radar scope is in the worst possible position. It's hidden behind the flight stick and the reflex sight, mounted really low in the cockpit. Still, it's a fun jet to fly in VR. To close out on the Sea Harrier FRS-1, this jet gets all aspect missiles, its thrust to weight ratio is excellent, it gets a full ballistics computer, and it can do VTOL stuff. However, its dogfighting agility isn't the best, its engine can overheat itself pretty easily, and its radar doesn't have any advanced features. The final verdict on the Sea Harrier is that this jet is really great as a squadron vehicle and it can provide an entry point into several high-tier gameplay mechanics. On its own, it's a reasonably effective fighter with a little bit of practice, and it's even useful as close air support. Not a bad jet. As always, thanks for watching.